Hi, my name is Adam. I'm with IP-Audio.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the InStreamer product from Barracks. The Barracks InStreamer is a IP audio encoder so it can take an analog audio stream and, and encode it to MP3 or PCM or G711 and stream it out over IP networks. When you receive the product, it comes in a box like this. It's got all the specifications written right here. Here's the other side of the box. The product itself looks like this. This is the front of the InStreamer. It's got a reset button, some status LEDs, and a headphone output. And then it's got the RCA line inputs where you send the audio into the device. An RS-232 DB9 connector here. Uh, this device can also send uh, serial streams over the network as well as audio streams. And it's got the Ethernet jack here to connect to the network. And then it's got a micro USB power socket. On the sides of the device, you can see it's got these channels. They're for an optional audio mounting bracket that you can purchase, also at ipaudio.com. And it will slide right into the bracket. And then there's some holes on the bottom that you can um, mount this to a surface with. The channels on the bottom allow you to mount this device to our 19 inch rack mount shelf um, for if you need to put it on a rack. The bottom of the device you can see the the part number and uh, the power supply specifications. This device basically functions to send audio streams over networks. So it can send the stream to a software player on a computer for instance like Winamp uh, Windows Media Player or Real Player, something like that. Or it can send the stream to a mobile device. A mobile device with a software player can pull a stream from the InStreamer. Or a uh, Barracks XStreamer hardware decoder device uh, can receive streams from this guy as well. So I'll show you examples of all of those as we move forward here. But we can talk about first what happens when you first power up the device. Uh, when you plug it in, it'll go out and look for a DHCP server to get an IP address from. And if it can find one, it'll automatically get an IP, and then it will audibly tell you through the headphone jack here what the IP address that it got was. Another option is we have a software application called the Discovery Tool that you can use to go out and find any barracks device that's on the network. But I'll show you how this works. So we'll plug in our network cable here to the Ethernet jack, and then we'll power it up and you'll be able to see it go out and look for, it, uh, look for an IP address. I'll plug this uh, headphone jack into this powered speaker here so you can hear what it sounds like. Go ahead and power it up here. The lights will blink and that's when you know it's going out to look for an IP address. One nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one, nine, five. Okay, so that was the slightly German accented English uh, that told you what the IP address of this device was that it just got from the DHCP server. Uh, you can also obviously set it for a static IP. You can enable or disable that function um, so that you can stop it from talking every time it powers up. But basically that makes it really easy and really simple to go out and figure out what the IP is when you plug it onto the network the first time. Once you've done that now, you can go in, uh, open up a web browser on a computer and log into the thing at that IP address and configure it just like you'd configure a router or an IP camera or something of that nature. It's a real simple device to use and configure. It walks you through all the different steps. It's, it's got different options so you can say, tell it you want to encode to MP3 or you want to encode to PCM or what uh, level of encoding and, and how, the, how high a quality you want it and so on. So here first we'll show you how this device can stream to say Winamp on our computer. So I'll just connect the output of uh, this phone here that's playing an mp3 file um, through these RCA line outputs. We'll connect that into the RCA line inputs on the back of the device. Okay, and we're playing there, and now I'll open up a Winamp window here and connect to the in-streamer so you can hear the sound. 
So to connect to it, just go to File, Play URL, and the IP address that we just heard is what we can type into there, and then it will play that. Um, I've already got it in there, so I'll just hit Play. And there we go. Now, you can see how easy and fast it is, especially when you know what the IP address of the device is right when it powers up. Uh, it's real simple to just open up and connect right to that. And now we're pulling a stream. This can be over the internet or a LAN. Uh, obviously right now for this demo it's just going over the LAN in our office here. But as you can see in this picture, it could be going in streamer here out over the internet to a computer or software player on a computer that way as well. Uh, the only difference is if you're going to pull the stream from the in-streamer and it's behind a router, you'd have to configure that router to let the request go through. You'd maybe have to do some port forwarding or something of that nature. So that's the first example. Uh, second example I'll show is how we can do the same kind of thing, but instead of streaming to a software player on a computer, we're going to use our audio decoder, our hardware decoder here. This is actually the Xstreamer 200 from Barrix that you can also purchase at ip-audio.com. This has got a built-in amplifier so you can connect it directly to speakers and that's what I'm showing here. It's already powered up, we just have it turned down. So if I turn this up, it's pulling the same stream here from the in-streamer that our software player was. And they're both going right now concurrently. You can see that this is still streaming here. I can turn it up a little bit. You can hear there's a little bit of an echo. The reason for that is that the buffering on the software player is set higher than what our hardware decoder is. So these can stream with very low latency. Uh, typically WinApp and Windows Media Player, Real Player are going to have quite, quite a bit higher buffering and so that's why the audio was delayed a little bit here. We've got another audio decoder here. This is our Xtreamer 110. Uh, this one's kind of interesting because it's got an LCD display in the front. So not only can you hear the IP address, you can see when it picks it up, it'll show what the IP is on the front of the screen. And then it will also show what it's streaming at and if there's metadata like a song title or audio information for the artist, something like that, it'll show that on the screen as well. And so now as this powers up, you'll see it automatically connects to this. This is set to stream out to both of these already. And now we're streaming to both of those and the computer at the same time. So I'll turn this down a little bit. Okay, so the last thing I'll show then, the, the fourth example of how we're streaming here, we can also stream to a software player on a mobile device, such as an Android device. Um, this is an application I found just on a Google Play Store, uh, it's called Cherry R Player. And I basically just set this up to pull a stream from the in-streamer, the same way that our Winamp player on our computer was pulling the stream from the in-streamer. And so this guy, there you can hear it's streaming now as well. So right now this in-streamer is actually serving four different devices, our computer and our two X-streamers and our mobile device all at the same time. It can handle a lot more than that depending on the way that you stream. It can, can even stream up to 32 devices or it can do a broadcast over a LAN or a subnet which could serve theoretically 253 devices so um, it's a very powerful device the price is $350 list uh, at ipaudio.com you can purchase it there it's oftentimes on sale for a little bit less than that um, it's a very reliable device there's no moving parts it's fanless um, so we have a lot of customers that use these and have a lot of luck with them. Radio stations use them for their studio to transmitter links over IP. So they'll send audio from their studio over IP to their transmitter instead of leasing a dedicated phone line. Um, so as long as you've got Ethernet in both locations, there's no ongoing cost for that. Um, we've got customers that use these to send background audio within buildings. Um, we've got schools or universities use these to send paging audio. In, bu in buildings and between buildings over IP uh, and a lot of times they'll be using Xtreme or 200s to play the audio on the other end. Um, yeah, I guess that's about all I want to discuss besides um, there's a reflector service that people may be interested in. Uh, typically, kind of talked about it already, but when you purchase an in-streamer and an X-streamer and you want to send the audio over the internet, 
you know, you're going to have routers in between and sometimes, or mo all the time if you have a router in between, you're probably going to have to configure the router to allow the, the audio stream to go through. And if you're not comfortable with configuring IP networks and routers and things like that, uh, there is an option, this reflector service, where the devices will just check in to the reflector service and configure themselves and then send the streams automatically through the service so that you don't have to do anything with the router. Now there is a small cost involved per device that you put on the reflector account, um, but it's very, very easy. You can basically take the devices out of the box, log into your account, tell the account that you've got an in-streamer and an X-streamer, and then they'll start playing. You don't have to do anything as far as configuring routers or the devices themselves. So um, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, you can email us at info at ip-audio.com. Again, that's info like information at ip-audio.com. Or just go to our website. You can see that email address on there. There's a lot more information. There's links to manuals and everything else. And, of course, you can purchase the devices on there, as I said before. Hopefully this has been educational and helpful for you, especially if you're looking for a, a way to stream audio over networks. Uh, if we can do anything else for you, let us know. Thank you.